Welcome everyone to the AIT SAP e-learning channel. I am architect Jyotsna Gaur and today we are going to learn about Mesopotamian civilization and its architecture. The ancient river valley civilizations came up along the banks of rivers as they enabled agriculture and transportation. The earliest of the civilizations was in China along the Huanghu River in 3950 BC. The second was Mesopotamian civilization located in modern day Iraq, which was along the rivers Tigris and Euphrates. Then came up the ancient Egyptian civilization along the river Nile and finally our Indus Valley civilization along the Indus River in about 2500 BC. All of these ancient river valley civilizations were not completely isolated. They had linkages. There were important cities, there was sea trade and there was migration. The Fertile Crescent is a crescent-shaped region in the Middle East spanning modern-day Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Israel, Palestine, Jordan, the Northeast and Nile Valley regions of Egypt, together with the southeastern region of Turkey and the western fringes of Iran. It was a region in ancient times considered to have the richest soil and hence great civilizations could come up here. Coming to the Mesopotamian civilization, it is located in modern day Iraq. It was irrigated by two rivers, Tigris in the east and Euphrates in the west. It is known to be the earliest literary civilization and to have consisted of state cities. For this reason also perhaps this region is known as the cradle of civilization. The Mesopotamian region was ruled by different dynasties and had its fair share of invaders. The first was the Sumerian Empire which came up in about 3500 BC. This was followed by the invasion of Akkadians from the north and founded the Akkadian Empire in 2300 BC. After its decline, the Sumerian Empire revived as the Neo-Sumerian Empire. It was overtaken by the Babylonian Empire in 1790 BC. After about 600 years, the Assyrians took over in 1100 BC. The Babylonian Empire again revived as the Neo-Babylonian Empire. It was overtaken by the Persians from the east until about 330 BC when Alexander the Great took over from Greece. Tracing the history of events in Mesopotamia In about 5000 BC, groups of farmers settled in southern Mesopotamia in an area called Sumer. They used irrigation to water their crops. 150 years later, the Sumerians built cities that housed thousands of people. Staying together in large numbers, the Sumerians invented the cuneiform script of writing, called so because of the wedge shape of its characters. They also discovered the wheel in 3100 BC. In 2700 BC, Gilgamesh ruled the Sumerian city of Uruk. He became the subject of many legends. In about 2000 BC, Sumer was overtaken by invaders. After about 300 years, the Babylonian Empire ruled most of Mesopotamia. King Hammurabi established a new written code of law for his people. Babylon was invaded in 1595 BC and 
was ruled by the Kassites for 400 years. Overtaking them in northern Mesopotamia, the Assyrians began building up their empire. Their major cities included Assur and Nineveh. They built beautiful palaces, famous one being the palace of Sargon in Khorsabad. They were also the first empire to establish a royal library of clay tablets. The Assyrian Empire collapsed and a new Babylonian Empire was established. An even bigger and grander empire ruling most of Mesopotamia. Their prominent king was Nebuchadnezzar II who commissioned the Ishtar Gate, Hanging Gardens of Babylon and the Tower of Babel. Soon in 539 BC, the Persians from the east captured the Babylonian Empire. In 330 BC, Alexander the Great defeated the Persians and made Babylon the capital of his empire. Let us discuss about the architecture during each of this period. Sumerian period 3500 to 2300 BC. Sumer was located in the southern part of Mesopotamia and consisted of city states like Ur, Uruk, and Eridu. Eridu was the oldest known city of Sumer. They were the first civilization in Mesopotamia to settle collectively and form city states. They were also the first civilization to develop writing. Their script was called the cuneiform script because of the wedge-shaped character they used as alphabets. Sumerian civilization was the first civilization to develop the wheel in 3000 BC. In terms of architecture, the construction of ziggurats also began in the Sumerian period. Ziggurats, they were the enlarged shrine standing on a high platform which took the shape of a stepped tower and formed a part of a larger temple complex. It was a pyramidal stepped tower which served both an architecture and a religious characteristic for the cities of Mesopotamia. Unlike the Egyptian pyramids, the Mesopotamian ziggurats were smaller. The Egyptian pyramids were generally 200 feet in height or more and ziggurats averaged at about 170 feet. They had a square base and approximately 25 ziggurats are known being equally divided among Sumer, Babylonia and Assyria. According to some British archaeologists, the sloping side and terraces were often landscaped with trees and shrubs and this is perhaps believed to be the formation of the hanging gardens of Babylon. The best preserved ziggurat is at Ur, which is modern-day Iraq. The largest ziggurat is at Choga Zambil in Ilam, which is present-day Iran, is about 330 feet square and 80 feet high and stands at less than half its estimated original height today. The Sumerian cities were simple in terms of planning. They consisted of generally two temples or a temple complex with the shrine, which is the ziggurat, dwellings and chambers. The dwellings and chambers were small spaces. It was characterized by flat roofs and there were no columns. They used sun-dried bricks as the main material because they lived along the river valley and that was perhaps the easiest available material. The Akkadians from the northern region of Mesopotamia arrived at about 2350 BC and unified the kingdom ruled by one warrior king. The Akkadian Empire was short-lived and was overthrown by invaders in 2150 BC. The invaders could not rule the land. Soon after, the reminiscent allegiances to Sumerian city-states returned and gave rise to the new Sumerian period. The most famous city of Neo-Sumerian period was Ur, which is in modern-day Iraq. 
Ur was a coastal city, a walled coastal city, worshipping Nannar, that is the god of moon, located near the mouth of the river Euphrates. The city consisted of a temple complex, as shown here, and a residential district. The temple complex had the ziggurat situated inside it. The residential district had maze-like plots and houses with courtyards. Each ziggurat was part of a temple complex that included a courtyard, storage rooms, bathrooms and living quarters for the nobles. The temple complex of Ur had a large ziggurat in the middle. The ziggurat had stairs leading from the three direction in the front and both the sides. It had a buttress wall and temple on the top. The temple at the top housed shrines and it was used for worship by the priests. The Babylonian Empire in the middle and south of Mesopotamia was ruled by King Hammurabi and is famous because this is where the first written code of law was established. As you can see in the pictures, the clay tablet depicting King Hammurabi in his court and the codified written law. The Babylonian rule was short-lived and was invaded by Kassites and Hittites. After about 600 years, the Assyrian Empire took shape in Mesopotamia. Assyrians were great warriors. They controlled the southern Mesopotamia after Babylon. They had three great capital cities, Nimrud, Khorsabad and Nineveh. As you can see in one of the pictures, the Assyrian warriors are being shown. In the bottom right picture, a Lamassu, which is a mascot of the Assyrian Empire, is being shown. It was a majestic icon depicting a centaur. Comparisons could be made to the Sphinx of Egypt. The picture to the left depicts the stone entrance of Khorsabad city, which was built by King Sargon II in 720 BC. The picture to the right in the distance near the river shows the city wall of Nineveh which was made by King Sennacherib in 880 to 632 BC. This picture shows the recreated view of Nineveh city by the Assyrians. As you can see, the city is based near the coast of Euphrates river. You can see the ziggurat in the distance, agriculture, boating and the city wall. The Assyrians were builders of great palaces, the most famous being the palace of Sargon II in Khorsabad. Picture to the left shows the plan of the palace. The main entrance was flanked by a statue of two Lamases who rose to a height of more than 12 feet. They led to a grand entrance court which was about 300 feet by 275 feet. The grand entrance court was surrounded by palatial spaces for the king and queens. Each of these rooms opened up into a courtyard. There is also a sloping way located on the sides of the palace compound. Perhaps it was used for transportation by animal-drawn carts. The palace complex was also large enough to house a 100 foot by 100 foot base ziggurat and a temple. King Sargon of Khorsabad erected his palace on a high plinth of about 50 feet in the northeastern part of the city of Khorsabad. The temples of the main gods, which were smaller in size, were built within the palatial rectangle, which was surrounded by a special wall. This arrangement enabled Sargon to supervise the priests better than had been possible in the old large temple complexes. Stone reliefs of two huge Lamassus bulls with human heads flanked the entrance as explained above. The walls were decorated with long rows of bas reliefs showing scenes of war and festive processions. According to French excavators, it contained more than 210 rooms grouped around three courtyards. The picture here shows a recreated view of the palace in Khorsabad, 
It shows the placement of the ziggurat within the palace as highlighted. It was called as the Great Ziggurat of Dur Sharukin. It was a four-story structure with a spiral staircase winding up around it. This is a recreated view of the temple courtyard showing the cresting on the parapet walls and the use of arches in the Assyrian period. Due to internal conflicts and lack of a strong leadership, the Assyrian Empire soon collapsed and gave way to the Neo-Babylonian Empire in 600 BC. This map shows the archaeological site of Babylon. This recreated plan of the city of Babylon shows that the city was fortified and built over the banks of Euphrates with ziggurat and the temple complex in the middle and the palace towards the north. The pictures above show the remains of Babylon and it has revealed that Babylon was indeed a grand city built by sun-baked bricks with massive structures and small chambers. Ishtar was the goddess of Babylon and in her honour an enormous burnt brick entreaty located in the ancient city of Babylon was built by the king Nebuchadnezzar II. Ishtar Gate was made of entirely burnt bricks. There was no availability of stone as Babylon was located on both sides of the river bank in the river valley of Euphrates. It was made of clay bricks. The beautiful blue color was a technique they applied called faience, which uses copper to create this magnificent blue color. This technique was also known to the Egyptians. This gate was built in about 575 BC and became the eighth fortified gate in the city. Ishtar Gate was more than 38 feet high and was decorated with glazed brick reliefs in tires of Mesopotamian dragons, which were a symbol of god Marduk, and ancient bulls. The gate itself was a double gate and on its south side was a vast antechamber. Through the gateway ran a stone and brick paved avenue called the processional way that has been traced over a length of more than half a mile. Under the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, hanging gardens of Babylon and the Tower of Babel were two enormous great structures that were built. Hanging gardens of Babylon were the ancient gardens and considered to be one of the seven wonders of the world. They were thought to be located near the royal palace in Babylon. The Tower of Babel was a large ziggurat and perhaps the first ancient skyscraper going up to a height of 100 meters. It was considered to be constructed in honor of God Marduk. The Neo-Babylonian Empire was soon invaded by the Persians from the east. This gave rise to a new Persian Empire in the Mesopotamian region. The Persians were known to build great cities and Persepolis was a prominent city of Persia. The entryway to the Persepolis city was known as the Gate of All Nations and it was built under the reign of King Xerxes. It was guarded by a pair of lamas. The structure is mainly built with stone and has load-bearing wall and beam. The Persians built enormously decorated palaces. The prominent one among them is the Persepolis Palace of King Darius in 518 BC. It has highly decorated columns and beams, a high relief and rich decoration on architrave and complex capital. Stone is the main material. Persian architecture also has a large influence on Indian architecture, perhaps by the military campaign of Alexander the Great in both the regions. 
in the palace complex of Persepolis, map shown here. Perhaps the most interesting architectural marvel is the Hall of Hundred Columns, possibly built by King Xerxes. It has a high density of hundred columns with having a very small span. Xerxes Hall of Hundred Columns is the largest space in the palace and contains about 10,000 people. The area is around 76.2 square meters. The palace complex at Persepolis was built by the three generations of kings of the Achaemenid Empire. This ensemble of majestic approaches, monumental stairways, throne rooms, which are also known as apadanas, reception rooms and annexure buildings is classified among the world's greatest archaeological sites by UNESCO. The map here shows the placement of various buildings within the palace complex. The gate of all nations built by Xerxes is shown by the yellow color, the apadanas by the red and the hall of hundred columns of Xerxes by light blue. The Emmedean kings Darius I and his son Xerxes and his grandson Artaxerxes built the splendid palatial complex on an immense half-natural, half-artificial terrace. Darius's program at Persepolis included the building of a massive terraced platform covering 125,000 square meters of the promontory. This platform supported four groups of structures. Residential quarters, a treasury, ceremonial palaces and fortifications. Scholars continue to debate the purpose and nature of the site. Primary sources indicate that Darius saw himself building an important stronghold. This 13 hectares palace complex comprises of majestic approaches, monumental stairways, throne rooms, reception rooms and dependencies. The terrace, which is the high plinth for the palace complex, is a grandiose architectural creation with its double flight of access stairs, walls covered by sculpted friezes at various levels. Contingent Assyrianesque propelia, which is the monumental gateway, gigantic sculpted winged bulls, which are the lamassus, and remains of large horns. In the pictures below, you can get to know the scale of the high plinth and the type of staircases used within the palatial complex. The terrace of Persepolis continues to be, as its founder Darius would have wished, the image of the Achaemenid monarchy itself. The summit where likenesses of the king reappear unceasingly. Here, as the conqueror of a monster, as shown in the reliefs on the staircase walls, they are carried on his throne by the downtrodden enemy and where lengthy cohorts of sculpted warriors and guards, dignitaries and tribute bearers parade endlessly. The monumental stairways that approach the Apadana from the north and the east were adorned with registers of relief sculpture that depict representatives of the 23 subject nations of the Persian Empire bringing valuable gifts as tribute to the king. The sculptures form a processional scene, leading some scholars to conclude that the reliefs capture the scene of actual annual tribute processions perhaps on the occasion of the Persian New Year that took place at Persepolis. The relief program of the Northern Stairway was perhaps completed 
in 500 to 490 BC. The two sets of stairway reliefs mirror and complement each other. Each program has a central scene of the enthroned king flanked by his attendants and guards. Noblemen wearing elite outfits and military apparel are also present. The representatives of the 23 nations, each led by an attendant, bring tribute while dressed in costumes suggestive of their land of origin. By carefully engineering lighter roofs and using wooden lintels, the architects were able to use a minimal number of astonishingly slender columns to support open area roofs. It allowed the architects to use in open areas a minimum number of astonishingly slender columns which were about 1.6 meters in diameter with a height of about 20 meters. The Appadana Palace is a large ceremonial building, likely an audience hall with an associated portico. The audience hall itself is hypostyle in its plan, meaning that the roof of the structure is supported by columns. Apadana is a Persian term equivalent to the Greek hypostyle. The footprint of the Apadana is approximately 1000 square meters. Originally with 72 columns, each column standing to a height of roughly 20 to 24 meters supported the roof. In the present day, only 14 columns remain standing. The column capitals assumed the form of either twin-headed bulls, eagles or lions. All animals represented royal authority and kingship. The king of the Atmanidin Persian Empire is presumed to have received guests and tribute in this soaring imposing space. To that end, a sculptural program decorates the monumental stairways on the north and east. The pictures below show the columns and the proportions with respect to their diameter and height. The picture to the right shows the bull capital supporting the wooden lintels. Columns were topped with elaborate capitals. Typical was the double bull capital where resting on double volutes the four quarters of the two kneeling bulls placed back to back extend their coupled necks and their twin heads directly under the intersection of the beams of the ceiling. Persepolis was the seat of government of the Atmanid Empire, though it was designed primarily to be a spectacular center for the receptions and festivals of the kings and their vast empire. The relief program of the Apadana serves to reinforce and underscore the power of the Persian king and the breadth of his dominion. From this lesson, we can get to know the important legacies that the Mesopotamian civilization left behind. They were revolutionary innovations which gave rise to a great civilization and some of these are still practiced. The innovations were to recapitulate codified laws, the ziggurats, cuneiform script, irrigation, metalworking and tools, trade and transportation, wheel, writing, mathematics, and a prosperous living based on a large-scale agriculture. Thank you, dear listeners, for tuning in.
For more information regarding Mesopotamian architecture, you can refer to the sources listed below. For more such informative videos, you can access the AIT SAP eLearning YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us. This is RK Pradyot Nagar signing off.